Hi. I know that if I tell you I am going to show you a couple of museums, it won't sound that interesting. There are so many people who are not interested in museums. It's just amazing. And I agree because sometimes some museums are just boring. But what I am going to show you today is up there, up in the very top, probably among the one of the three best museums I have ever visited. And I tell you, I have been lucky enough to be able to be a nomad before being a nomad, so I was able to go places. I visited amazing museums in Europe. In, well, here in the United States, like the ones in Chicago, in so many places. So, and this one I am going to show you is up there with the best ones I have seen. It's a small museum, but with such a respect for information and how to present it and the amazing ways they have found to keep you interested for a long while. The first museum we visited was the Achugarri Museum in Maldonado. And Achugarri is a sculptor that works on marble. He has tried many different types of elements, but his museum is located in the middle of an extensive field groomed to perfection and when we were there they were just giving the new building the finishing touches so we couldn't go in there the building itself is a work of art it's the lines are just so evocative of to me it looks like in the sails catching the wind or something like that which is very relevant when you're by the ocean in such a beautiful I mean environment so the building itself is absolutely magnificent and I guess when his uh, sculptures and everything are displayed in the building the whole experience is going to be mind-blowing it is already super interesting. In my video of Maldonado and Punta del Este, I have already showed you Casa Pueblo, the big white house that grew on the side of this mountain we call the Whale. So, but inside of that house, there is a museum of all the arts Carlos Paez Villaró has produced throughout his very fruitful career and long life. So I am going to show you a little 
uh, a couple of photos of all the beautiful places that are in the museum of Casa Pueblo because I showed you the home itself, how it was built, uh, what we ate there in the restaurant, there is a hotel, all those things. But these are just images of the museum part of the house. And then finally, this is the one museum that for me, it is somewhere in the three best museums I have visited. And it is the house of Lusich. Lusich uh, was the son of an immigrant from Poland. And they established themselves there. They started a shipping company I mean, they built ships and they had ships. They had a, a fleet of over 80 ships or something like that. So it was a big scale thing for those times. And Lusich, the owner of this one particular house that was later uh, passed on to his daughters and then they sold it to the city. And so now the city runs the museum. This is the actual house where they lived, and it is by the ocean. And uh, the museum tells you the story of all the, all the shipwrecks around that area, because the Rio de la Plata, this very wide river, the widest river in the world, is very difficult to navigate. There is a lot of rocks underneath, so during a storm, it was very likely if you were on a ship, you were going to have troubles. And uh, Lusich had his ships and they would go to the rescue of the other ships that were passing by. But remember this detail. Remember I told you the capital city has a natural harbor that is really, really deep. So many um, trading ships full of merchandise were coming to that harbor and in many cases those merchandise were going to be transferred to Buenos Aires, Argentina. So what happens is the folklore, the stories people tell, they talk about Lusich uh, creating these even more dangerous situations for those ships by, I don't know, maybe turning off the beacons or something because they wanted to raid those ships. I haven't found proof of that, but it is common knowledge that something like that happened. So we are going to go into his house what was his house, that is still beautiful, to see what is in there. And then we are going to take a walk outside because one of the things he was passionate about was bringing plants and trees from all over the world and plant them there. So he probably created the biggest collection of plants from all origins. So that is another experience on its own. You can see trees from all over the world in there. But in the house where the museum is, there is this, for example, this room dedicated to the story of those shipwrecks and the audio and the visuals in that room, they are amazing. You really feel like you're in the middle of a storm in the middle of that river. And that 
it, that really feels scary. And you can hear reading to you the report of what happened that night when they got the distress call or how it happened, how, what ship they sent to rescue the other ship. So there is a full um, record of all the uh, shipwrecks around that area and how they tried to save them. We will never know if they did on purpose or they were actually good people. We will never know. But in any case, the museum itself is amazing. There is a room where this uh, natural fauna is displayed. There was nothing that was dead at some point and restored and put there. Every little bird, for example, it's a wooden sculpture in the true size and true colors of the actual bird they represent with a description of the bird and all those things. But I had never seen a museum showing you the fauna without having to see dead animals.
if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed it. You take care. Have a great day.